For so many of us, the 30th of August was just another Wednesday. I was having another episode on the precipice of a collapsing relationship. It's nothing out of the ordinary. We've all been there. And we all woke up to our governments and local media releasing new propaganda speeches and analysis. And most of us ignored it, preferring ignorance over misinformation. But in Gabon, it wasn't business as usual, though it started as just another day for the thief. Earlier that day, Gabon's electoral body had announced President Ali Bongo as the winner of the just-concluded presidential election in the country. Bongo had just won an unconstitutional third term in office, and I'm pretty sure that France and the United States were in the process of writing their congratulatory messages when 12 senior Gabonese military officials appeared on national TV to announce that they've taken over power. And just like that, congratulatory messages was replaced with stern condemnation that expressed serious concern over an unconstitutional and undemocratic government. Yes, you can always count on Western politicians to show how much they lack a sense of irony and abound in blatant hypocrisy. They are also immune to reality because the reality showed crowds of Gabonese parading the streets in jubilation at the rise of this unconstitutional dictatorship. The new military leaders called Ali Bongo's government irresponsible and unpredictable and accused them of deteriorating cohesion and driving the country into chaos, to which the people of Gabon shouted a loud Amen. Meanwhile, the president of Gabon, under house arrest, released a video calling on his international friends to make some noise. I am to send a message to all the friends that we have all over the world to tell them to make noise, to make noise, for the people here have arrested me and my family. Which they had already done, sounding the alarm from Paris to Washington, even down to Asurok. Yes, France can always count on this faithful, mindless puppet. But who is Ali Bongo and why is this story very important? A short answer is, Ali Bongo is the most useful Western plant in Africa and its uproot from power affects the whole of France, the US and WEF on West Africa. Bongo had two missions, which he effectively executed. One, be a useful plant for the globalist agenda in Africa. Two, pillage the wealth of Gabon with impunity. On the ground of his first mission, Bongo was a good friend of one of America's worst president, Barack Obama, who groomed Bongo and made him the sharpest tool in the toolbox of America's imperialist agenda in Africa, also known as effective foreign policy. And the two were so close that the US foreign policy christened Bongo as Obama's man in Africa. Obama helped create an image of Bongo as a reformist modernizer. Of course, how else will you define a man who once imported fake snow to his presidential palace so he and his family could enjoy an authentic Christmas experience? If that is not a reformist modernizer, then no one else is. Bongo was also a frequent guest at Davos. The World Economic Forum crowned him a gender contributor, and on his coronation, he vowed to accelerate the fourth industrial revolution in Africa by implementing lucrative digital identification and payment system in Gabon. Yes, that's exactly what Gabon needs. A country of 2.4 million people with over 33% of them living in abject poverty. Bongo also has a pretty impressive resume on the WEF website. Did you know that he's the spokesperson for Africa on biodiversity and a composer of musical pieces. His hobby include history, football, classical music, jazz, and Vosa Nova. The kind of guy Bill Gates would love to have dinner with. He was buddy with the who is who of who deserve God's judgment. From Klaus Schwab to the epitome of black brilliance, Barack Obama. On the ground of his second mission, Ali Bongo was just simply following the footsteps of his father, Omar Bongo Odimba, autocratic ruler of Gabon from 1967 to 2004, when he passed away. He left his son a half a billion dollar presidential palace, luxury homes in exotic locations like Beverly Hills and Paris, and a nation always ripe for fervent exploitation. And Ali Bongo was a true son of his father, a chip of the old block, an extravagant pillager. He got himself a Boeing 777 airline, fleets of luxury cars that make Andrew it look like a pauper. His sister blew over 50 million on expensive homes and elaborate vacations. This democratic crime family used their wealth to buy political influence in France, delivering African generosity to the campaign of former French President Nicolas Sarkozy and Jackie Chirac. When you are as corrupt as Bongo, there is no way France won't call your reign the brilliant rays of eye-watering democracy. And of course, Obama would work closely with you. The qualification for being his VP was being a corrupt, racist, and wicked politician. Joe Biden's exploits left Obama in awe and admiration and he quickly fell in love with Bongo when he saw Bongo's accomplishment. Bongo's lengthy record of corruption left butterflies in Obama's stomach and they consummated their affair in Libya, spreading their seed of democracy. Remember the war in Libya? Yes, Gabon was a helpful tool in bringing Gaddafi down. Bongo was the first African leader to call for Gaddafi to give up power. He turned Gabon into the UN Security Council, rubber stamping US demand for sanctions and a no-fly zone on Libya in February 2011. 
Four months later, Obama paid his African boyfriend a visit. And here is a remark from the US ambassador to Gabon about Bongo's staff. It reads, They could call any African leader with a private cell number. They knew Gaddafi and they knew his chief of staff very well. And we were trying to walk through the Gabonese to get Gaddafi to step down without military action. I mean, who needs a colonialist government in Africa when you have Ali Bongo? And with his help, Libya became the desolation that it is today, a hub for ISIS and other terrorist organizations whose access to Libya's deposit of ammunition made weapons available to jihadist group across the Sahel region. One of those groups is Boko Haram. But hey, at least Michelle Obama was all in favor of hashtag bring back our girls. With the help of France and the US, a jihadist coalition established a de facto caliphate in Northeast Mali. You see, you can accuse the US and French government of many moral atrocities in Africa, but at least Islamophobia isn't one of them. And despite the omnipresence of French and the US military in this region, terrorist activity still reigns supreme. And in 2014, Bongo was rewarded by his American boyfriend, who invited him to the US African Leaders Summit in Washington. And they were elegantly pictured sitting next to each other while Lionel Richie was performing. I mean, too much black excellence on display. In 2016, Bongo won his second term election. The election rigging was so obvious that he had to stay in Gabon to solidify his win against growing controversy. And that prevented him from receiving the Global Citizen Award from the Atlantic Council. But while he was having a blast as president importing fake snow on Christmas, his downfall was brewing in Bamako, the capital of Mali, where a group known as Patriots for Mali started popularizing the call for the removal of the French military from Mali. They gathered millions of signatures for this cause and called on Russia to help replace the French military. Their message ignited the people of Mali who supported a popular military coup in the country in 2021. And the message of the movement spread to Burkina Faso and Niger. And this week, it landed on the presidential palace of Ali Bongo. And as Nigerians will say, every day is for the thief, but one day is for the owner. And Ali Bongo is a thief. A useful thief. A friend with thieves from Barack Obama to Emmanuel Macron. Upon his removal from office, videos have surfaced showing bags of money stored in the presidential palace. You would think this was the FBI raiding the home of a Mexican drug lord. And as the Bible says, when the wicked falls, the people rejoice. And I'm sure France, NATO and the US are in panic mode. Their grip on West Africa is loosening and Russia is taking advantage of it all. But it's not just Western leaders. African leaders are also afraid that they will be next in line. Some are now weakening their military demoting top generals, everyone is panicking and citizens of many West African countries are hoping that their country will be next. I mean, enough is enough. The people are tired. Anti-Western sentiment can be heard from a stadium in South Africa filled with racists to the creeks in West Africa filled with starving children. Now, I don't know if this move is the right move. I'm not a huge fan of Russia, but one thing is certain. It is time to end illegitimate Western interference in Africa.